Hello, Douglas County. It's Friday, August 5th, 2022. And I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County and the Public Information Officer for the Fire Department. Welcome to today's edition of COVID-19 Update with Dr. Janet Meemark, District Director of Cobb and Douglas Public Health. Welcome, Dr. Meemark. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Thanks good, for having good. me today. <laughs> sure, sure. Thanks for joining us and taking the time. I know you've been busy, so I'll get right to it. But let's start off talking about monkeypox. I know this is a COVID-19 update, but we want to start talking about monkeypox because that's the latest that we're hearing as far as a public health emergency. Isn't that correct? Yeah. So it's a World Health Organization made it a, a public health emergency of an international concern. And now the United States has added on a public health emergency as well. Oh, man. Well, can you tell us and tell our viewers with Douglas County and outside the lines of Douglas County, what is monkeypox and what are the symptoms that people should look out for? Yeah, so, you know, monkeypox has actually been around a while, and there are many countries that actually, you know, will have um, some outbreaks of monkeypox. And so, you know, I think this is kind of new for all of us, because it's kind of one of the first times that we've heard that it's come to the United States. And, you know, and now it's, you know, we've got ourselves a bit of an outbreak. And so um, I think we're hearing a lot more about it here in the U.S. now. So monkeypox is actually in this family of the smallpox. And you all remember um, <clears throat> how there were a lot of concerns, you know, back in before the 70s um, about smallpox. And, and many folks um, that were born before 1970 uh, may have gotten vaccinated for um, smallpox as well. And so, you know, we, and like I said, we will get some of these mini outbreaks of, of monkeypox in other countries, but this is like one of the first times that we've actually had it come to the United States and cause um, a bit of trouble. And so monkeypox is a, a viral illness that you can get. And, um, you know, it, it looks a lot like a lot of the other viral illnesses that we can get. So you can get a fever with it and chills and very um, fatigued. Um, back pain is one of those things that people are mentioning. And you will get a rash with it as well. And, and the rash is actually the, the symptom that is most um, coinciding with um, transmission and giving it to others. And so it can be like a little blistery, pearly rash that can um, turn into some scaly lesions. Um, they can happen anywhere on the body. And if you have those at any point, um, those can be infectious and can um, be transmitted to others. What can you tell us um... Dr. Meemark, locally, about monkeypox locally? Yeah, so locally, um, we have 55 cases between Cobb and Douglas County. There are over 500 cases in Georgia right now. And so we are seeing it rapidly spread in the um, metro Atlanta area. Um, what we are seeing, so the majority of people that are being affected right now are people that identify as men who have sex with other men or who have had um, more than two partners in the last 14 days. So that being said, you know, I want to make sure that we kind of talk about that a little bit because folks think that, you know, first of all, there's no way I can get this. This has nothing to do with me and, you know, kind of you know, why should I care type of thing. Um, that's one. And the other thing is people are calling it a straight um, sexually transmitted disease. And so um, it is not a sexually transmitted disease. Right now, it is being transmitted most effectively, you know, that way. But it is not a straight transmitted, sexually transmitted disease. And so I think it's very similar to, you know, other things that you look at, like maybe chicken pox or other kind of, you know, viral rashes. Anybody can get them, you know, and so um, just right now, this is way it, the way it's being transmitted, but you can get those lesions anywhere. You can get them on your face, your arms, your legs, your back. And if you come in contact with those lesions, you can catch it. And my understanding is, is that it is very painful. And um, people are reporting a lot of trouble with pain control when they get this. So, you know, it might not be deadly but it's miserable. It can make you very sick and it can also cause a great deal of pain. Um, the other thing is, you know, it, this is something that we wanna try to contain as quick as possible because, you know, there is possibility of spread um, to other folks. And so 
children can get it. And you, know, you never know if you have, you know, um, contact with someone that has these lesions um, elsewhere on them, you can inadvertently get uh, monkeypox. And so um, that is why it's kind of a, a big deal right now is because we want to, we want to control it as best we can, because it's not, it's not a fun virus to get and, um, and we don't want it to spread. And you talk about, you know, not a fun virus. I think it's also not fun what the number I just heard. I mean, 55 confirmed cases between yeah. Cobb and Douglas counties. Is that correct? Yeah, it's growing every day. Every day that number is growing. Well, tell me something. Does Cobb and Douglas Public Health, are, the, are you guys really are offering the monkeypox vaccine or testing? Yeah, so there are a couple of things. So, you know, the... Um, um, response to this uh, emergency is, you know, going, you know, coming along. And so um, a lot of commercial people, vendors like LabCorp and your doctors and urgent cares will offer monkeypox testing. So that's one thing, right? Um, make sure, please make sure, you know, if you're feverish or anything, you wear a mask and, and then also cover your lesions. That's important as well. Um, but um, we also offer some testing as well. Um, we don't have large amounts of testing, but we offer testing by appointment. So you can check on our website to make an appointment for testing. Now we have been receiving some vaccines. This week is the first week that we've received our um, like kind of first tranche of vaccines. And so we are offering to higher risk folks right now. And so those are uh, men who identify as having sex with men and um, who had more than two sex partners. Those um, can sign up for to have um, to get the vaccine at, at um, multiple locations that we have. And I think you touched on this a little bit um, you, you know, while you were speaking earlier, but it doesn't hurt to reiterate because I know it'll come up with questions. Uh, many people are asking if monkeypox is considered an STD yeah. And, yeah. and it's, it's not right. No, it's not. It is not, not considered an STD right now. So it's important it's, to, you know, right now is being transmitted by some folks sexually, but you can get it, you know, anyway, those lesions can be anywhere and then it can, when they're out, so whether they're scabbed or blistery, you are infectious at that point. So please, here's another good point too, um, Rick, that you know, we can say is that if you, um, you have had contact with somebody that had these lesions and you, know, you might be in a higher risk category or you were in contact with somebody that is, is part of a higher risk um, group, uh, you know, in you, before you get ruled out, you need to isolate, you know, so make sure you have those lesions covered, you know, keep a mask on uh, before you get tested. And, um, you know, some people think isolating is staying at home with your pets and your family. That's, mm -hmm. that, you know, that's not really isolating. This can also spread by things like, you know, bed sheets and um, towels, and it's not just through um, skin to skin contact. So you really need to stay on your own, um, your pet's can actually trans, you know, transmit it over, um, and you can inadvertently give it to folks that, that you you don't want to. I've heard reports that daycares are sending kids home for having a pimple or a mosquito bite or something like that, with no history of being um, a contact to a case, and they're yeah. also requiring a test to return. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so that is really, I, I hate hearing that. It's um, it's not really appropriate not right now to be doing that. This is, a, you know, this is a, a specific population and every child that comes in with a pimple or a rash cannot be, um, cannot have monkeypox ruled out and they are very low risk unless they are, you know, part of a higher risk contact. Um, I, you know, I think it's fine to, um, you know, read up on it and, you know, ask the family, say, are you part of this, you know, higher risk? Or do you know if the child has had any contact with somebody? You know, you couldn't, you never know. It could be a babysitter or somebody they might've had contact with that, that could have been. And so that's an appropriate situation that maybe you want to get the child tested. But for every rash, these children should not be, not be sent home. Now, if they have fevers, you know, or any other symptoms that could make them infectious, sure, you probably don't want that spread all over the daycare, right? But right. please, you know, please do not send these kids home for one pimple and to, and to rule this out. These, you know, my kids got mosquito bites all over them right now. And, and you know, it's just not, it's not appropriate to, to assume that that's what they have. And I think it's very important not to panic. Absolutely, know, to panic. absolutely. Yeah. Now let's shift gears a bit. Talk about COVID. Are we still in high community transmission in Douglas County? 
Yeah, unfortunately we are. And so we've been there for a little bit now. And, you know, and I look back mm. at, at kind of the graphs today and um, this particular surge has been happening since um, about April. And so it does look like maybe we're plateauing. We've been plateauing, but it has not been going down. I mean, but we've been on a plateau for a while. So we continue to be in high transmission and this is um, driven by the um, BA5 um, sub mutation. And um, that one, it's about 86% of all the mutations we see right now and um, it's throughout the United States. So I think we got double whammied on this surge. Um, you know, we went into April and then we got the BA2 um, mm -hmm. whammy and then we got hit with BA4 and BA5. And so, um, you know, it, it's what we're seeing now is a lot of people are infected and way more people than we have recorded because um, home antigen tests are, are so widely available. Um, but um, the good thing is, is that we have seen we have seen an increase in hospitalizations, but not nearly what we saw back in the winter time. And so that's good news. Now, the one thing I did see, though, that I was a little bit surprised by was that, you know, what we're seeing in hospitalizations are people that um, had received their, their vaccinations, the two dose vaccines and who had also were unvaccinated. Um, but, you know, who the most protected was, the most protected was the folks that had gotten their vaccine series plus the boosters. Yeah. And so really important um, to get those and make sure you're all boosted up. Which I did. And I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm too young for my second booster. <laughs> um, um, tell me something. I understand that the COVID testing kiosks are now up and running in our district of Douglas County. What can you tell us about these? Yeah, we're really excited. So we have this new partnership with DPH to have these um, self-swabbing kiosks that are available now. So they awesome. kind of remind me of the um, airport ones where you can get anything, yeah. you can get earbuds, you can get makeup, <laughs> you can get anything out of these kiosks. So now right. you can get a COVID test, a PCR COVID test. You can swab it yourself and put it back in and get your results within 24 hours. So we have two of these that are being piloted. We're kind of lucky there aren't that many in the state. So we have two in our district. We have one at the Douglas County uh, Fire Department on Veterans Memorial and one at Riverside Epicenter on Riverside Parkway. So um, uh, I think we're gonna, there's some instructional videos so you can go ahead and just check it out. Oh yeah. And I wanna let people know too, that if they're looking for the address to the Douglas County Fire Department headquarters, it's located at 12,501 Veterans Memorial Highway. Again, the Douglas County Fire Department headquarters is located at 12,501 Veterans Memorial Highway and in Douglasville. And, you know, for those who are looking for a site, it's right next to Hudson's, Hudson's Barbecue. All right. So, you know, I think that is great. Um, Dr. Meemark, I have one other question about COVID. I hear there's a new COVID vaccine av available. What is it? And is it available at Cobb and Douglas Public Health? Yeah, so this is the new Novavax vaccine. So you remember, remember Rick, when we started way back, you know, a year and a half ago, the vaccines came out and the mRNA vaccines, people were very hesitant because it was new technology, right? So there are yeah. a lot of people that didn't want to get the vaccine. Well, those of you that have been waiting for the traditional technology, well, your wait is over. The Novavax vaccine has arrived. And so it is a vaccine that's like the traditional um, vaccines like the flu vaccine and hepatitis and whooping cough. And it's available for 18 and over. There are two shots, um, but they are available at Common Duck Douglas Public Health. And it, it, it's the Novavax vaccine. Well, thank you, Dr. Meemark. This is great information. Before we close, is there anything else you'd like to tell our residents of Douglas County? Yeah, so, um, you know, we're hopefully we're going to come down off of this peak soon. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to remind folks that um, really one of the most important things that you can do right now is, is probably make sure your vaccines are up to date. So um, if you need the monkey pox vaccine um, and you are high risk, we have those available at Cobb and Douglas Public Health. If you have not gotten your first booster uh, for COVID, please make sure you do that. And if you're over 50 or immunocompromised, you can get the second booster. So please um, go ahead and get those because those are proving to be very, very protective. We, and we still have some folks that are hospitalized and we had an increase in deaths as well. Um, so it's very important to make sure we're all kind of up to date on that. But other than that, stay safe and thank you. Oh, yes. And please, you know, if you haven't received that second booster, do get so. 
do do so, I should say. <laughs> All right. On behalf of Dr. Janet Meemark and Cobb and Douglas Public Health, I'm Rick Martin. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day.